In this video, we're going to learn to make a top trump style card using PowerPoint. To start with, I'm drawing the outline of the card. I've chosen a rounded rectangle. You'll notice the source graphic has a frame in its design. So I'm drawing a second rounded rectangle. To make it match the source graphic, I'm going to click the yellow square. That will adjust the radius on the corners. To format the shape further, I'm going to get the Format Shape tab up. This brings a drop down box on the right hand side. In this instance, I'm going to change the colour. To do this, I'm using the eyedropper tool. When I go over the source graphic, I can pick a part I want to copy the colour, and it will fill the shape that I've already highlighted with that colour. Watch again. This time, I'm doing it for the gradient tool. Initial adjustments in the gradient tool include direction and the stops. Each stop can be clicked on and its colour changed. In this instance, I'm again using the eyedropper tool. That way, I can get my graphic to match the source graphic. You'll notice here, just as with the rounded rectangle, I'm matching my circle with the circle and the source graphic. Once I'm happy, it's time to start formatting. In this instance, I'm going to adjust the weight of the outline. As soon as I've clicked on weight, you'll notice the format shape column has changed. Highlighted is the cursor, and you'll see I'm changing the weight in terms of its thickness to match the source graphic. Again, the eyedropper tool is used so that my graphic matches the source graphic. I set the circle to transparent. I'm creating a bespoke shape. I press and hold the shape one to keep. I hold shift, I press the shape and I subtract from it. In the format tab, I go to merge shapes and subtract. In this instance, I use the big circle to subtract away from, but I still wanted to keep it. So I ended up copying the shape first, then doing the subtract, and then pasting it back in. Just as with the big circle, I'm adjusting the weight of the outline. Only this time, rather than using the eyedropper tool, I've just set the grey. The rectangles that hold the text at the bottom of the card. Once I've drawn up one, use the eyedropper tool to colour it, change the outline, and any other features I want to change. On the keyboard, I've done Ctrl and C to copy it, and then Ctrl and V to paste it as many times as I need. all highlighted, I can move them together.
just to match the source material and then going back in, I've selected two and I'm recolouring them. Now the swoosh shape is created in much the same way as the circle shape at the top right of the card. I've created an ellipsoid. I only want to keep half of it, or part of it. So in this instance, I'm going to draw a rectangle. And that rectangle is going to cover the part of the ellipsoid I want to get rid of. I click the ellipsoid first because I want to keep it. Pressing and holding shift, I then select the square. And then in the format tab, I select merge shapes and then subtract. Because in the source material, the shape is actually a swoosh shape, I've copied and pasted it. I'm then going to adjust the second copy to be slightly smaller. Once I'm happy, I can start changing the colours to create the effect that the source material has got. This time, rather than using the eyedropper tool, I've just selected a grey. You'll notice on the source material, the swish shape isn't just grey, it's grey and white. If I had more time, I would copy the swish shape twice more, and each time change the colour a little bit. The inside shape is coloured red, and all that's left now is that swish that you can see in the source card. You'll notice I've gone to shape options again and now I'm going to start playing with shadow. Rather than exterior shadow, I've selected an interior shadow. By creating the interior shadow, I can then adjust it to create a better or different effect. And in this case, the effect I'm after is creating a sense of depth within the graphic. I'm doing it again now with the main shape. By playing a transparency, I'm creating a dark or lightness. By playing a distance, I'm changing how far the shadow comes in. And blur changes how stark the shadow looks. Once I'm happy, I just leave it alone. In PowerPoint, you can click on any shape and immediately start typing. There's no need to have a text box over these shapes. By highlighting the text, I've used a drop down menu to select a font that's appropriate for my design. And there we have a very simple image using a source graphic. In this instance, I've used top trump cards from the internet. You could quite easily mimic this style using board games, for example. This drawing can take taken much further with a lot more care and time. But hopefully it's given you ideas for you to get started on your own creations. <laughs>